Hey, it's Mr. Lineski, and we are looking at section three today of unit nine. We're looking at rectangles, rhombi, and squares. Uh, last e, uh, section, we talked about uh, parallelograms, and we talked about the properties of parallelograms. So now we're going to look at some of the properties of um, rectangles, rhombi, and squares. Uh, rectangles, rhombus, and a square are all different types of parallelograms. They have all of the same properties of parallelograms. So things like opposite sides congruent, um, opposite angles congruent, all of those properties we talked about in section two, all of those properties relate to a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square as well. In addition to those six properties, we also sort of have some new properties that we're going to look at and that you kind of need to learn and know. Um, so in a rectangle, there's nothing new about the sides. Um, the sides we still know are opposite sides are congruent and opposite sides are parallel, so nothing new there. Um, however, the new properties of a rectangle is that all four angles are 90 degree angles in a rectangle. Um, so something like, you know, if I draw a rectangle, all of these angles are 90 degrees. Um, the other thing is that the diagonals are congruent. So keep in mind the properties from parallelograms tell us that, that, that the diagonals bisect each other. Um, we also know that they bisect each other and now that they are congruent to each other. Um, so that means that when they bisect each other, they're all going to equal the same amount. So each of these little pieces is equal to the same thing. Um, so for an example there, I kind of just drew them out. Um, but to kind of elaborate a little bit further on some of these, I can say that these two angles here add up to equal 90 degrees. I can still say things like these are opposite, are alternate interior angles, so they're congruent. Um, and then I can also kind of look at this and say, well, these, this makes an isosceles triangle, and so the base angles would be congruent as well. Um, so if this was something like 60 degrees, that would also have to be 60 degrees because of the base angle theorem. Um, so those are our properties of a rectangle. So let's take a look at what a rhombus is. Um, a rhombus has new features that all four sides are congruent. Um, so all four sides have the same length. Um, nothing special is going on with the angles, uh, but we do have that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and that the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. Um, so sort of this is what this looks like. So if I had something that looked like that, I can say that all of those sides are congruent. If I drew the diagonals in, I could say that the diagonals are perpendicular, so they all meet at a 90 degree angle in the middle there. Um, and then I could say something like, um, if I drew the diagonals, that the diagonals bisect these angles, that they um, get cut in half. So that's what we're talking about with a rhombus. Um, and then finally, a square. The square is kind of like the end-all, be-all, mush everything together. So it has all the properties of a parallelogram, and it also has all the properties of a rectangle and all the properties of a rhombus. Um, so all four sides are the same in a square. All four angles are 90 degrees. The, the diagonals are congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular. The diagonals bisect the opposite angles. Um, the diagonals create the isosceles triangles. So um, just as a very basic view of this, that's sort of a very basic view of the square that kind of covers these first two properties here, that the sides are congruent, that the angles are 90 degrees. And then if we look at the diagonals, they meet at 90 degrees. They bisect each other. And then this angle here gets bisected. And so if I bisect a 90 degree angle, these angles are always going to be 45 degrees. So we technically have four 45, 45, 90 triangles inside of a square. Um, and so those are the properties of a square. So now we're going to look at some example problems and just kind of knowing what these properties are and how we can kind of use them to solve for some problems. Um, so it says use rectangle A, B, C, D. So in our head we should be thinking of the properties of a rectangle. Uh, answer the following question. So it says if D, E is 13, find the measure of C, A. And so what we need to remember here is that the diagonals 
bisect each other and that they're congruent. So that means all of these little pieces here are 13. And so if this is 13 and that's 13, AC or CA has to equal 26. Um, for the next one, it says if BAC is 4x plus 5 and CAD is 5x minus 14, find the measure of CAD. Um, so BAC is this angle here. So that's 4x plus 5. And then CAD is this angle here. That's 5x minus 14. And they want us to find the measure of CAD. So what you need to remember about these two angles here in a rectangle, they add up to equal 90 degrees. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add the two things together and set it equal to 90 degrees. <clears throat> Whoops. So I add 9 to both sides. That gives me 9x equals 99. Divide both sides by 9 and we get x equals 11. So now to find the measure of angle CAD, we basically just substitute 11 into this and we get 55 minus 14, giving us an answer of 41 degrees. So those are our rectangle problems. Um, looking at a rhombus, so this figure is a rhombus, rhombus A, B, C, D. Um, if DEC equals 5X, find the value of X. So DEC is this angle right here. One of the properties of a rhombus is that the diagonals um, are perpendicular. And so we know that that angle has to equal 90 degrees. And so we basically can just say that 5X is equal to 90, divide both sides by 5, and we get that X is equal to 18. Next one says if DE is equal to 3, and CE is equal to 4, find the measure of DC. Well, just when you thought we were done with triangles and Pythagorean theorem, you are wrong, my friend, because how we're going to solve for DC is we're basically focusing our attention on this right triangle right here, and we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. So DC is the hypotenuse, so we'll just call that X, and we'll say this. Uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. Whoops. Square root both sides, I get x is equal to 5. So dc is equal to 5. Remember, a rhombus, that means all of these sides here would equal 5. So that's our example for a rhombus. And then finally, we'll take a look at an example of some square problems. Uh, given a square, a, b, c, d, uh, answer the question. So we're told that bc is 3x plus 14. We're told that DC equals 5X minus 8. And they want us to find the value of X. So what do we need to know about a square? That all of the sides are equal to each other. So we can say 5X minus 8 equals 3X plus 14. Get the X's on both sides, and we're going to add that over to get 22. So X equals 11. Um, and then the last question here, it says if EB or I'm sorry, EAB is 5x minus 20, find the value of x. So looking at my figure, EAB is this angle right here. And so it's kind of like, all right, well, what do I do with that? What you need to remember is that the diagonals bisect the angles. And so if this is a 90 degree angle and it gets bisected, each of those little pieces is equal to 45 degrees. And so you basically can set that equal to 45. Um, so we're going to add that to both sides. 5x equals 65. Divide both uh, sides by 5. And we get x is equal to 13. All right, uh, the next couple of problems here, these are ones for you to try on your own to see if you're kind of understanding the properties. You're just solving for all of the missing variables. Thank you for watching.